Akana <laughs> Apamenin ilihamini kuna agnes kurs nanugak wani agla rakhluit kolakta on kok ukat ICS kut taruk to ali wan 1985 me uluk saktumun the Lady of Victory Church, better known to everyone as the Igloo Church, is hard to miss when you're going down the main street of Inuvik. Designer of the Igloo Church, Brother Lorak, along with others, began building in 1958. It took two years to complete. Father Ebner, pastor of the parish, says today the Igloo Church is probably Inuvik's number one tourist attraction. My impression is that it's um, probably number one. The uh, most people that I've seen uh, come to Inubik, um want to see the Igloo Church, uh, even if they only happen to have a few minutes of time left after a meeting or whatever it may be. The, I'd say it's a quite an attraction. When the town of Inuvik was first being built, the people wanted a church that would be unique in structure and would appeal to the natives of this area. The shape of an igloo was approved and work began. Brother Larocque made a unique church with no blueprints at all. With the help of Father Adam, Father French, and Brother Larocque as foreman, they began filling in the foundation. Father Rion says the foundation was also different than any other building because they didn't use pilings but used a gravel pad instead. Well, we started the foundation in 1958, and. Uh, but we finished the church itself uh, more in the, during the winter 59-60. We kept on working during two years. And uh, the first time we used it was uh, at Easter 1959, I mean 1960, 1960. Uh, but it was blessed only during the summer 1960. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been on concrete, not on pilings ever since? Exactly, yeah, it's on concrete. Uh, of co the concrete is not inside the, the ground. I mean, we first put uh, uh, some gravel, about some places up to seven, eight feet thick, a, pad, a, a big pad of gravel, and we put the concrete on top of the pad of gravel, you see, so way above the ground, not inside the ground like you do usually when you have concrete foundation. Mm -hmm. But uh, Brother Lahok uh, said that uh, it was not a good idea in Inuvik because the uh, underground was frozen. Mm -hmm. He was afraid that it would uh, not stand so well. Mm -hmm. uh, what type of equipment do you guys use? Oh, we had... Uh, our own equipment, like, uh, of course, we had uh, a concrete mixer, and uh, we had uh, forklift, and we had, uh, we were fairly well equipped uh, to, to do the build mm -hmm. work, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. um, how many people worked on you? I'm not too sure exactly, but we had, uh, Brother Laroque himself was, uh, I would say, the foreman, uh, the big uh, head uh, behind everything. And uh, he had everything in his head, in fact, not so much on paper. And uh, I would say some kind of a genius. Uh, and uh, we had uh, another good carpenter and a few native uh, people helping on. But uh, something interesting that perhaps you don't know is that uh, he had no plan. Uh, mm -hmm. and the government let us go ahead, always they said, uh, you will build something that makes sense. But after a year or two, they said, hey, perhaps you should give us a plan approved by an architect. We didn't have any. So the plans were made afterward mm -hmm. uh, by Father French and uh, Brother Larocque. 
And uh, in the architect, uh, when he looked at them, uh, didn't understand too well. So he came with his uh, engineer to look at them. And he was very satisfied. In fact, he said that uh, the structure was probably too strong in the sense that uh, normally people wouldn't use uh, such a strong uh, structure to for a building like this. They would probably use a laminated uh, beam instead of uh, heavy beam like we did. But for us, uh, it was probably less expensive to do it this way because the beams themselves were built by Brother Larocque mm -hmm. alone during the winter uh, with 58, 59. He had a workshop and uh, he built each uh, uh, beam uh, himself. Was it volunteer work or the workers paid? Two work? yeah. 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 But there was also some volunteers. The plumbing, eating, well, mostly eating, was done by a crew of uh, plumbers who were working on the other buildings in town. Mm -hmm. And they would do this uh, during the evenings and during their day off. Mm -hmm. how, so, much, how much did it cost? Well, we paid for the material, but they didn't charge anything for the labor. Mm -hmm. That was a big saving. Mm -hmm. Who paid for it? Well, uh, the building itself uh, in those days, uh, I believe, cost maybe $150,000, which is uh, not really very much. Uh, uh, but that was the cost of the material, and uh, some of the labor had to be paid, too. Mm -hmm. Mona Thrasher, now a well-known artist, first began showing her talent on the walls of the Igloo Church. At the age of 18, she brought her first painting, which was painted on lumber, to Father Adam. He asked her to paint the picture of Jesus knocking at the door on the top of the entrance door. Then he asked her to paint two others on the top of the two other entranceways. Father Rian says Father Adam thought they were pretty good, so he asked her to paint the way of the cross. First, uh, she brought him uh painting she made, but uh, it was uh, quite simple, that one, it was uh, painted by the number, you know. And uh, Father Adam asked her to make a big one like that. That's the uh, one you see mm -hmm. at the top of the back of the, uh, the, the door over there. And uh, that was the first one she made. Then Father Adam asked her to do the, those two other ones above the doors. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, he thought it was pretty good, so he asked her for that to make a rule of the cross. He gave uh, uh, some sample of uh, uh, little pictures, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, as you can see, these uh, paintings are made in the wall itself. Mm -hmm. It's part of the wall. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you put on the wall afterward. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, and that these paintings actually were the first uh, big paintings made by Muna Trasha. Mm -hmm. No, she's well known as an, an artist, but mm -hmm. in those days, she was living in a bush with her parents, mm -hmm. and she didn't know too much about painting. Yeah, yeah. But Father Adam himself was an artist. Uh, he did some painting, too. Mm -hmm. So he was able to guide her a little bit uh, mm -hmm. at the beginning, anyways. She did uh, most of them uh, during the winter uh, 19... Uh, 1869-60, when uh, the building was already covered, it was heated enough, so she did that uh, here inside the, the church, most of them, I mean the, the way of the cross. Did she have any help? No, no? Uh, except for the Radam himself, who, as I say, was an artist and mm -hmm. uh, guide her more, more or less, uh, but otherwise uh, she, did, she did that alone. Mm -hmm. How many paintings in the church altogether? We have an idea that uh, there are 14 stations of the cross, uh -huh. and there are those three big paintings above the doors, and there are two other big paintings uh, behind the altars. And uh -huh. So I would say about uh, 20 paintings, pretty close, eh? mm -hmm. yeah. Father Adam, who was himself an artist, designed and made by hand the decorations and backdrop around the altar. 
Father Adam had a lot to do with that part. You see the, the design, uh, the decorations, like Father Franchemont was more a builder who, and, uh, with material, but Father Adam had uh, ideas. So he was uh, communicating his ideas to those who were building, like Brother Larocque and uh, Father Franch. He didn't do the, except uh, Father Adam did uh, some of the work, uh, like what you call a pewter. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, that was done by Father Adam. But uh, otherwise, uh, everything else was done by uh, Father, uh, Brother Larocque and uh, some of his uh, helpers. When the church was completed in the summer of 1960, the church was able to hold a maximum of 350 people. Father Ion remembers the day. During the summer of 1960, if I remember, that was uh, the 15th of August, 1960, that the uh, Bishop Pichet, I mean Bishop yeah, Bishop Pichet, correct, yeah. Bishop Pichet came uh, to bless the church, and we had a big uh, celebration, mm -hmm. of course, inside the church. Since the opening of the Lady of Victory Church, there have been tourists coming from all over the world to view the church, which was built in the shape of an igloo. Father Ebner has given tours to many different people from both near and far. He says he enjoys having people come to visit, and he hopes they enjoy their stay. Is there tourists coming in in all, all seasons of the year? Or? There is a little dribble in the wintertime, and that would probably be people who are coming in on some business rather than on a tourist tour. As soon as the warm weather arrives, of course, where they begin to flood in, and not only by air, but also by, by bus. And um, so the busiest time is actually in the summer. <laughs> where do some of your tourists come from? They come from all over. I haven't kept track and I haven't asked all the folks, but um, some from Europe. And I remember uh, one, uh, some from Australia this last summer. And, um, but from all over. I haven't uh, asked the folks again from what particular province they may come because they, they arrive by busloads. And uh, I'm not quite sure from uh, I suppose Alberta and, and BC would probably be those from whom most of the people come. What is it that attracts the, the tourists to the English church? Some like to see the, um, well, just the, they find the graceful lines uh, interesting, the, the unique style. Others uh, may be uh, interested in uh, also in the uh, manner of construction because it, again, it is uh, a little bit unique and they may particularly want to go upstairs then to see the arches and all of that sort of thing. And uh, most everybody also is interested in the, um, in the paintings of Mona Thrasher. She painted the Stations of the Cross here, and uh, they find that um, uh, very interesting. Who conducts the tours in the church? Some people uh, may come in by themselves and uh, just want to browse uh, quietly. Some come to look and pray. Um, some come and uh, may call for us to uh, show them around the place, and we'll uh, tell them a little story uh, about other things too. And um, many people come on formal tours, maybe by bus, and they generally have a tour guide. And the tour guides uh, know uh, about the place, and uh, they take the people in, and even upstairs. And, so it, it differs depending upon the, the, the group and, and the people. Do you work at all with the New Vic Tourist Center? We, um, in so much as if uh, they want to get into the building and they happen to be locked at the time, or um, if they want some information that, uh, about the place that uh, they haven't had before, or um, if they have somebody coming at a particular time and they want us to be present for a reason. Um, yeah. we, um, but most of the time, the tour guides, uh, being well acquainted with the situation, take care of themselves and the people. What information do you give the tours when they come to the church? They may ask about a lot of, a lot of things other than the church itself. And um, if they are new, we may tell them a few things about Kinsey River, how big it is, and where we are. And um, 
the details that I have um, picked up since I have been here about the size of the church itself and um, how it was made. And generally, I try to encourage people if they've come this far, no matter from where, to go on a little further and they might as well see the rest, like Aklavik and, and Tuck, and, um, because they're, they're so close and they might as well see all that we have up there here for them to see. Do you get any letters from different countries about the Igla Church? Uh, since I've been here, a few. Um, the people may write and say, say like at Christmas time or at other times, and say, uh, we uh, happened to visit your igloo church when we were in Inuvik, and uh, they may send a picture of themselves or themselves uh, in front of the church, or um, but saying that they, they um, appreciate their, their little visit and the stop and the, the fact that we spent a little time with them. So the, the odd letter comes from here and there. Do you think that the church always was a tourist attraction ever since it was built? My impression is that it has been. Of course, I've only been here since last February, but I have been in other postings previous to coming here, and uh, people that would come through would say if they had been here that they had made it a point to see the church for sure while they were here. So uh, I would say that's uh, definitely a tourist attraction. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, Father Adam uh, wished uh, at the time that we had a bigger church, but uh, I'm, I'm, I think that uh, it's quite big enough. There was a time uh, it seemed that we had uh, perhaps more people coming to church, but I hear that uh, uh, we are quite happy with the size of the building. And uh, so we are quite happy with the church and uh, I'm sure that it's where it's not only uh, the Catholic church, but the people of Inuvik were happy to have uh, such a church which, uh, as you know, is well known not only in Canada, mm -hmm. but even uh, all over the world. Mm -hmm. I remember reading in a magazine printed in Japan mm -hmm. about uh, this church and many articles everywhere in Europe, everywhere. It's, I don't, don't know why it's so, yeah. because it's a special uh, design. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's unique in the design. Do you have anything you'd like to add? Well, right offhand, um, we enjoyed uh, having the visitors. Uh, we hope they enjoy their tour in Inubik. And um, if anyone comes, um, they're certainly free to, to call us at any time, day or night. If they'd like to look around, and um, they seem to appreciate it. And, and we enjoy um, having them come. and. Uh, help them uh, have a good visit to Inuvik. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oktopal <laughs> Tap go up the oak nan mawut. Tuk to see oak to nan mawut. Titrawe looked at car. Awe me took to see orang a making it run. So out the minnick to pang minnick low. Soon it not pakotainic. Soon soon a balong ning nan mawak pakto. A glad him made him made no it and it to make pinner up kit. Him made king one a pishop pak to a lot. Inuit king one a him made pishop pak to a lot. Up
Ayang uyan, ayang uyan, ayang uyan. Tayo maliw taklo ni ko, ukiyo, ukiyo me, taksiga me, ukiyo lagpok angon, atak tam na puwi ko paklug. 